Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I come, don't come from China. I'm actually from Malaysia. Uh, uh, today we're going to talk about two topics: uh, Ashtray 199 and also APC innovation. APC stands for Air Pollution Control. Basically, it's uh, handling larger amount of dust rather than compared to air filter. In principle, we try to reach the same levels of efficiency and energy saving like an air filter. So, the interesting thing about this year or recently is the ashtray 199 that uh, is being introduced and is the first standard that uh, is used in a dust collector industry. Okay. So what is ASHTRAY 199-2003? So this standard is first introduced in 2013 uh, and it is in their final revision uh, last year, as, as I believe this is the final draft, so it will be implemented in 2018 and so this will be the new standard which the industry will adhere to to test the dust collector. So before this we do not have any standard which uh, we use to test our dust collectors. We only test whatever is uh, emitted out from the dust collector where we collect data about emission to the environment. If some of you are more familiar with OSHA and DOE regulations, you will need to do stack sampling and particulate sampling to achieve this. However, we do not have the liability to the manufacturers to provide data, initial data of their dust collector performance capability. So, ASHTRAY 199 is actually solving this problem. So, what is ASHTRAY 199? It is a quantitative laboratory test method to determine the effectiveness and uh, the efficiency of the dust collector. To run this test, we have to be uh, very independent. Therefore, we use a black box concept that we do not uh, care what type of dust collector we are using. We do not mind what type, how many filter cartridge we are using. It all will be predetermined uh, at the beginning, but we will look at uh, four points which is critical, which is the pressure differential, which is very critical in the air industry, the compressed air consumption, which is used to clean pulse dust collector, and there is two other uh, efficiency which we will use. One is the photometric emission, which is also the same type of uh, measuring uh, efficiency of a HEPA filter, and gravimetric efficiency, which is for coarser dust. Okay? So you need an input before you can get an output. So the input will be airflow, test dust, compressed air, electricity, and pulsing mode. Uh, so far, anyone have ever come across dust collectors? No? <laughs> so, um, uh, the input requirement is to make sure that the airflow maintains at a certain velocity to avoid any dust settling in the ductwork. So, you need to maintain it at above. 3,005 and not above 5,000 feet per minute because that will be um, too fast and it will give you a very high pressure drop, so not an accurate reading. Okay. Then we 
we use calcium carbonate, which is 95% uh, marble dust, uh, ranging between 0.3 micron and 10 micron. Uh, the compressed air should be clean, uh, particularly uh, from particulate humidity and oil. The electricity is for the housing and also the fan. Okay. Secondly, then the output, we will measure the differential pressure using PTO needle rings, compressed air consumption based on calculation, and gravimetric efficiency using EPTF membrane of 0.4 micron pore size. And then you have a photometric emission which can read a PM1, PM2.5 and PM10 which, which has been repeated again and again in previous presentation. Okay? So this is the setup what it looks like. We have one of these in our Jonesboro plant which is in the US. So we only need to run this test once for each dust collectors. You can have multiple scenarios and it takes around 55 hours to complete one test. So you, in front here you have the dust fit system and you have the dust injector. This simulates the dust which is entering uh, the dust collector from your processes. And then you have a piezometer ring to measure the effort, uh, the differential pressure before entering the dust collector. This is the dust collector itself. This is another piezometer ring to measure the differential pressure after leaving the dust collector. This area is a leakage point area. If you have sedimentation in this area, that means your filters are not properly installed. So it should you should uh, check this before we run the test. And there will be a, a styling disc over here to uh, laminate the flow, uh, to create a laminar flow so that it, uh, it will give a good result for your sampling points. This is not necessary if you can prove that there is no turbulence within your ductwork, which is very unlikely. Okay. Then comes the two sampling points and then there will be another uh, photometric airflow meter and there will be an airflow nozzle and a downstream airflow piezometer pressure trap. So this, this will measure the total airflow of the system. And then the last but not least, every dust collector needs a blower. This is how the piezometer ring looks like. Okay, in this test, there are six stages. First stage is conditioning. Then we come to the real performance test. And then we have a recovery test in case there is a failure in your dust collector. So we, we do all these three tests to ensure that we have um, we, we have a good build-up of dust cake before reaching the performance test and then in case of a failure, we know whether we can still reuse the filter. Okay. This is a simulation or an expected result from the uh, test. First stage, we have a dust loading stage. This is the upper point limit where we start housing the dust collector, we start cleaning the filters. The difference between air filter and an air pollution control unit is it has a self-cleaning mechanism to prolong the life of the filter due to the high dust level. So when we reach the first stage, the first stage ends when it reaches the high limit point where we start want to start clean, cleaning the filters. And then when the second stage starts immediately after the first pulse, as you can see, the, the filter 
pressure drop drops almost immediately below the lower limit, which is the second yellow line be below uh, the upper yellow line. This continues on for four hours. Okay? I will explain a little bit later about the results of these this tests uh, later. And then we will go through a continuous power system. A continuous power system means I set a specific time, like 15 seconds, and the cleaning process will, will move on. So, for every 15 seconds, I will pulse my filter until it reaches 24 hours, or it reaches above, it cannot pulse above, uh, below uh, the low limit line. If it passes this test, we will continue on to the next test, which is the differential pressure mode test, on demand cleaning test, where we switch the cleaning mode to when it reaches the upper limit, we will pulse it, clean it. And we will go on for 20 hours and see how long does the uh, filter last up before it can reach uh, the lower limit. It cannot pulse below the lower limit. So this will take 20 hours at least, or until it fails to pulse below the lower limit. So after 20 hours, we stop. And then we will have stage 5 which we off the cleaning and let it go up to 10 inch water gauge which is approximately uh, 2.5 kilopascals and when it pulses down uh, for 10 cycles that means if you have 4 cleaning valves you will clean 40 times, 40 pulses at 25% of the airflow and we've re reintroduced the dust bin over here and we see whether it can go below this lower limit. In normal cases, normally it can't but it will not be significantly high. So from this we can judge if this filter actually can last long if we continuously pulse it. We can see the filter life uh, progress from uh, on-demand cleaning or differential pressure cleaning. We also can see that uh, the results for if there is an uh, emergency or a failure happen, can the filter be reused? So these are all critical points in the dust collector because this scenario happens and happens most of the time. Okay. Again, the stage stages, uh, I have written in more detail over here, but I have explained actually over on the other side, so I will skip this part. Okay. So this is a summary. So the baseline measures, uh, we, we will do the baseline measure for this procedure by preparing the environment of the test strip. Okay? What do we need to test? First, we need to test the pulse duration. Our controller will tell them that you know you pulse for 150 seconds, but we need to verify that with an oscilloscope. We also need to measure the interval between the pulses using a stopwatch. This is a verification method. Okay? And there will be, uh, we need to test the compressed air consumption with uh, a sensor at the inlet of the pressure tank. And we have to leave the pressure tank for a couple of hours to check if there's leakages. And then we will use the, uh, the fan, the VFD of the fan, to Simulate 25%, 50%, 75%, 100%, 125%, 75, 50, 25 of the specified airflow. Then measure the baseline PM 2.5, PM 2.10, and PM 1 values. This is to know what it, what dust is already in your air before you start the test. Temperature will be kept between 
between 16 degrees and 38 degrees. Relative humidity is best kept at 45%. Okay. So this is more details on the test procedures. Uh, I will not go into uh, a lot of details on this because it's, it's kind of tedious. Uh, but I will do the summary of this. So you have a baseline measurement which is the preparation stage where the airflow varies. No dust fit, but we need to measure the initial uh, photometric emission. And pulse cleaning is manually, see whether, whether you, you can pulse the system. So at stage one, we start again. We have a specified airflow for each dust collector. We introduce dust fit. We have no pulse cleaning because we want to build up the pressure to the upper limit. This we have sample one for the gravimetric efficiency and also the second one for photometric efficiency. So what's the difference between uh, gravimetric efficiency and photometric, uh, photometric emission? One, we test the number of particles which we uh, it is uh, escaping from the filters by measuring the PM1, PM2.5 and PM10 sizes. The gravimetric efficiency will measure the weight of dust which escape from the system uh, by weight. So there's two samples which uh, we are required to do. So number one will tell you the overall efficiency. The second one will tell you a more specific if you have a more hazardous dust that you will be interested in this, this uh, uh, readings because it will it will affect your your production, especially if you are in the pharmaceutical industry, uh, you are in a highly toxic industry, then this will be critical. And then when we go to the second stage again. The airflow remains the same. We have dust feed, but we start cleaning by on demand. Mean, means at the top of the upper limit of your uh, pressure drop, you will want to start cleaning. Okay? We do this for four hours, and we have the same sample from the stage one and stage two. Okay? Now we go to stage three. We go for Continuous cleaning, which is based on time. Our interval is about 15 seconds per pulse. And we have our second sample over here for both gravimetric and photometric emission and efficiency. Okay? The fourth and final test is, uh, is the most critical one because it is the, the test which measures the overall efficiency, as you see, see, the second one and the fourth one is the same, but the second stage we do not have a dust cake. That means at the early life of a filter, the efficiency of the filter is not as good. So when we have this stage four, these filters is already prepped, and after 24 hours of uh, of fil uh, filter being introduced by dust. Now we have another 20 hours of uh, testing of on-demand differential pressure base. So we have our sample 3. And then we have an upset condition where we stop cleaning the, the uh, filters and let it go up up to 10 inches of water gauge or 2.5 kilopascals. And we only monitor the photometric emission. Okay? And then we need to clean the filters back by all, uh, turning off the dust feed, lowering the airflow, and also uh, measuring the photometric emission. Okay? So once we reach uh, the 10 cycles, then we will start introducing. Uh, the dust again. Once we introduce the dust, we will 
have a minimum of one cycle of cleaning. One cycle of cleaning means if your dust collector has four valves of cleaning valves, we will use four uh, pulses. If uh, minimum four pulses, you can use eight, pul uh, eight pulses, but the result will not differ that much. Okay? Then we have our sample form of the photometric emission. So the results will show you, this is the more interesting part, where the results will show you the DP, differential pressure readings against your airflow, differential pressure again, uh, differential pressure readings at each uh, particular scenario, dust speed quantity, uh, compressed air consumption, gravimetric efficiency, and photometric data. So what we can know from this is how much the dust uh, how much the dust can the filter handle, how DP reacts towards airflow, how efficient is your pulse cleaning, and how efficient is your filter media, and can your, re can your filter recover after an overload of dust. So, five questions which we can answer from this ashtray test. Okay. This is the sample results from an ashtray test lab. This is the sample results, so we will go into a more detail. One of the results which is more critical, if you see, see the first graph, this is your differential pressure reading. So this is stage one. You can see it reached up to four inch, nearly four inch uh, water gauge. But at the real point, it was uh, actually maintained at around 3.7 okay. At the almost at the end there okay. So you have one, uh, one parameter which you know already Now then the second one is the lower set point You can know that the lower set point is around 2.5 inch water gauge Now the interesting part is the PM10 reading at the beginning at zero hour you can see there's a, a slight orange a color over here which tells you that the first hour of running the dust collector there's a lot of PM10 dust escaping so at the beginning the filter efficiency is not, uh, is not uh, very stable and then every time you pulse the filter using differential pressure mode, you can see there's a certain spike of dust escaping from the filter. Until a certain stage, where we enter stage 3, there is a larger spike until after 20 or 30 hours of running, you have very low variance of uh, emission from of the PM10 stage you see and see the over the red color line over here and when we go back to the DP stage there is basically almost nothing you can see that means the the filter has reached an efficiency of uh, almost 99% and then when you have uh, a, what uh, overload stage then you can see at the, during the cleaning of the overload stage you have a slight increase so from this graph itself it tells you a lot of things that it takes nearly 30 hours for a dust collector to run before it start. you can start measuring the efficiency and it can tell you that you know roughly around here your filter will survive an overload condition it will not be terribly affected. So this is actually from our lab test of our dust collector. So the next one is uh, to tell you the initial pressure drop. So when we take those initial airflow, we, we, we have this airflow which is running, going uh, higher and higher. The CFM is going higher and higher. You can know that this is at 100%. So this is 75% and this is 50% uh, and this is 25%. You can see a huge difference between 
the pressure drop of the filters. Okay. Now, I told you stage 4 is the most critical uh, of them all, but you, you can see over here, this is the PM10 reading. It gets stabilized over a longer period of time, but you can see the compressed air consumption is increasing over time. Uh, this is wrong, but I don't know why it's not correct. Okay. So, this is a more, the last 18 hours, uh, the last 8 hours of the differential pressure, 4 hours of the differential pressure reading. So, it will go up and down and up and down as you can see but uh, it almost equal. It doesn't go above 4 inch and it, it can be passed below 2.5. So this filter is a good filter. Okay? Now, this test result will show you that if you can see over here, the gravimetric efficiency goes from 88.27 at the stage 1, stage 2 improves at stage 3 to 98.83% and it finally stabilized at 99.41% at stage 4 and stage 5. So this is the four samples which is uh, being taken and you can see that the, the, the efficiency is increasing over time. So the dirtier your filter is, is actually more, uh, more efficient the filter. However, you have a problem with the pressure drop. As you can see, the pressure drop consumption from the first, uh, the, the number of pulses from the second stage, third stage, fourth stage, you can see the number of pulses used. Okay? If you have continuous cleaning, you, you will pass 8,600. 86,400 times compared to only 149 times which translates to electric 60 savings because you use very much less compressed air and we, in Canfield uh, air, air pollution control we always use uh, on-demand cleaning for our filters therefore we need uh, we, we can prolong our filter life and also save you energy. So we don't have to use a lot of compressed air to maintain the pressure drop at a low level. Okay? And you can see over here the last three lines that uh, the PM10, PM2.5 and PM1 reading goes smaller over time. So this is an interesting result. So if it goes bigger over time, then your filter is not good. Okay? Uh, then we have the total dust feed and the total number of houses. So this uh, number 4 and number 3 runs at almost basically almost uh, the same number of hours, which is 24 and this stage 4 is 20 hours but you can see the significant difference of number of houses so we, when we compare dust collectors that's what we want to see so if you have uh, two results or the similar results easily you can determine which, uh, which dust collector is better which, how long the filter will uh, last in, in your system uh, and run this test so this uh, is a new breakthrough in the industry so uh, I hope this test will be uh, requested by you, your party so that we, we can test between two uh, competitors and see, see whether those dust collector is a little bit more better ok so any questions for H3199 APC innovation. This uh, I'm using this time to introduce new products from our uh, our company. So uh, basically, there's four types of uh, products uh, which is in our company, which is new. 
Uh, the first will be the quad pulse package, this is for the pharmaceutical in industry. The quantum series, which is for the metal working industry. The gold series is for a general uh, industry. And the gold link is for uh, any application of dust collector. Okay. Uh, the first one I would like to introduce is the QPP. This is for the pharmaceutical industry. What is the QPP and why it was developed and what's the safety concept? Uh, why is it a good fit for the industry? Okay. This is a market specific uh, product which is targeting only the pharmaceutical industry. We have problems previously because we have problems with the small uh, location, interior locations that we want to fit in this dust collector. Okay? And then we, we have cross contamination problem for uh, ISPE, good manufacturing practice. And we also have uh, a problem with explosion protection equipment. You, if you don't know that 99% of dust is actually explosive. So each and every dust collector is needed you know, or required nowadays to install an explosion protection equipment. But if you have an active explosion protection equipment, boom, you have a fire or a catastrophic, a fish, uh, uh, catastrophic uh, event in your factory because you leave, you put the dust collector in your in your factory inside your factory and then you will have an explosion inside your factory. So that's not what we want. For normal cases, we always put the dust collector outside, but for pharmaceutical industry, you want it, the dust collector indoors because you want to control almost everything relative humidity. You want to control the temperature, you want to control the airflow, you don't want any cross-contamination, you don't want the dust to leak outside or your building. So, all this includes in a single, uh, single package for the pharmaceutical industry. So, what we, we, we come up with, we have four pieces of pulse nozzle. One of the key critical problems with dust collectors in the pharmaceutical industry today is the dust from the dust collector goes back to your tableting machine, your compression machine, uh, your filling machine and that will cause cross-contamination. So by designing it, our power system, our cleaning system this way, we reduce the compressed air use by reducing the pressure of the compressed air, we use, reduce the quantity of the compressed air use and therefore, in, 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 in other words, we reduce the risk of having dust flowing back into the room. So this is one unique technology which we have patented. Okay? And the second thing is the entire unit. It has a low height restriction, small footprint, which previously we do not have. Now we have one more complete unit, the main filter, the HEPA filter, H14 filters, uh, explosion protection equipment. This dust collector does not need an explosion vent. So if you put, uh, if, if, if you have an explosion inside your dust collector, it is fine. It can contain the explosion, so it is strong enough. So this is uh, one of the issues we, which we have taken care of that an explosion happened inside your building, you will not have to worry about the safety and the, the, the damage in your building. Okay? Now, of course, we have the best filters in the industry, therefore we have our H14 filters over here. So it, it, is, it, it is now the best available dust collector in four individual tableting machines and so on. We have uh, OEM for uh, many OEM customers like Fate, uh, Glab, and then uh, and also work with end users like Novartis and GSK to supply them these units. These units are already installed in many places. We will probably have about 70 installations now around the world. So. What about containment options? This is something very uh, useful for um, uh, high, high carcinogenic dust or uh, toxic dust. Basically, it's toxic dust where if human exposure, whether acute or chronic, it will cause
cause some health issues. So uh, the back in back out is similar to our goal series, which I will introduce later. And we have very big opening over here, so easy to change the bags. And also the same concept for the HEPA filters and bag in bag out for the discharge. So all holes are covered with bag in bag out, so you don't have a contamination problem. And then if you need to test your HEPA filters, we have a built-in uh, injection port, and then you have upstream testing and then a down port, downstream testing. Okay, so because this is an individual unit, we limit it to about 1,000 meter cube per hour. And you, we have all the ATEX certified motor equipment, and we have two choices of filters, which is uh, usable in the pharmaceutical industry. We have ATEX rated HEPA filters, and and we can also uh, withstand explosion with a period of uh, 0.6 bar and a shock rating of 1 bar. So, this will basically I translate it easier. This will qualify for ST test. So, safety concept that the foundation is to avoid ignition where we will earth everything in the dust collector. So, that's, that's the first. We will not have any ignition point. The second layer of protection is to uh, avoid any hazardous consequences in case of an explosion. Therefore, if there is an explosion happen, our dust collector will be able to withstand that explosion. Okay. Uh, so all bags are also used on the stainless steel bag wings to ensure uh, connection to the bag. And the, the bags are uh, uh, explosion tested using anti-static material. Okay, so the unique part of this is uh, they have a documentation that they can be used for all type of dust and then it is tested with explosion uh, protection equipment that the, the secondary safety filter is also tested with uh, explosive dust. What I mean is when we cut a hole over here, we don't have any safety barrier of the in primary filter then the HEPA filter is tested as an explosion barrier and it worked. So basically we know overall that we can handle up to ST2 dust, which is uh, 299 and 7.5 bar. Okay, uh, this is the dust, we, this is the test which we use is uh, using a KST 270 dust toner and the last test was using an aluminum dust of KST value of 300. So this is a very, very high uh, KST value. So uh, the reduced pressure ranges from 0.2 bar without holes and open outlet and up to 0.55 bar with complete closed unit and simulated hole in the main filter. So we pass both of these tests and we, we, we can say that this, this unit is actually ATEX certified. So, but this unit is not uh, suitable for gas, anything which is, uh, has a gas in it, which is above 20% of the low explosion limit. Okay? So the unit is designed to minimize all ignition to a high degree of dust and then it can handle internal explosion safely and then if the, re the unit remains safe even though the main cartridge fails in case of bypass dust going into the, the HEPA filter and uh, depending on the customer requirement the unit can be installed with an explosion vent which or pressure relief, uh, pressure relief vent which can increase uh, increase the ability to you do ST3 dust. Okay? It has excellent features and benefits over our all our products which we can now fill the gap in the market. Therefore, 
we, we now have the backup backup in specifically for our tabletting machine and compressed machine which is now in the pharmaceutical industry doing it individually and uh, uh, individually and in a smaller scale, batch scale. Any questions for the QPP, especially for the pharmaceutical? Uh, the quantum series is uh, what we call an entry level uh, dust collector where we want to target these markets which is a laser plasma cutting, welding, machine processing for non-explosive dust. So this, this is uh, uh, a good technology or a, a, a good pricing dust collector which caters for this market which deals with oxidized dust. Basically, we are a front runner at the laser and plasma cutting industry, and this this uh, this model is being OEM by majority of the laser table industry. So, what is the key features now? We have a low footprint. We have an integrated spark arrestor. We have an integrated fan. Uh, the easy installation. Well, basically, there's no installation. Basically, this is a plug and play unit. Uh, and uh, easy maintenance, you can maintain it from the ground. And then it uses a PTFE filter media cartridge and advanced seal design to prevent leaks and so on. So, basically, uh, this is a compact unit, a plug and play unit. You bring it to, to, your, to your side and then you, you turn it on and it works. This is how it looks like. We have three different models but use the same footprint. So this is a two cartridge unit, this is a four cartridge unit, and this is six cartridge unit. This is the internal picture. You can see the, the key point over here that the cyclone in the middle is actually our spark arrestor and also will remove heavier dust into the front small dust bin. And then before entering the main chamber over here, which is exposed to the need to fill this. So we have the specification here. Uh, this is for 1000 to 2000 amp uh, meter cube per hour. This is up to nearly 3000 meter cube per hour. This is up to nearly 6000 meter cube per hour. So we have the control system all built in, fan all built in. So it's a complete system which we can offer to the client. It comes with an optional fire suppression system, smoke detection and HEPA filter if necessary. The Gold Series is our core product in, in, in many ways, therefore I decided to, to present this again uh, uh, to, to the industry. Uh, it's basically a modular type of dust collector. So each each filter, uh, each dust collector is modular and has a container style dome. Okay, it's easy to change the filters which uh, using clamp operated bars uh, clamp, clamping, and then no trace involved. That means you don't need any toolings to change the filters. It has vertical design, which is good for vertical, uh, for efficient pulsing. High cross entry inlet eliminates upward velocities, uh, and with the old style, hopper style. And then we have a channel baffle inlet to be uh, used to remove uh, larger particles. So we can deliver these units very fast. So in, in, for standard dust collector without a fan, we can do it within two weeks because we have it on stock. And then it is very heavy duty. Uh, it uses a powder paint finish. Uh, wet paint is also available. Color you can choose. So this is the critical point of the Gold Series. It has an inner core. It, it moves uh, dust collector, it doesn't have an inner cone over here. Uh, this gives us additional media area. Okay. Second, it reduces.
reduces uh, it it reduces the area over here at the bottom where the velocity of the pulse can be clean at the same velocity from the top to the bottom because there's smaller area therefore air escaping at the same velocity at the bottom and third you have also uh, the, the header over here which receives the pulse more efficiently because rather than the bottom pen and then the, the last but not least you have a, a cannon effect down here with the hole which pushes the dust down to the pit so we have many types of media options and the pleating technology which is really uh, efficient uh, which can give up to 99.99% separation efficiency at 0.5 micron by weight or gravimetric uh, efficiency okay this this is our MERF reading if those familiar with air filter you can see we can achieve uh, up to MERF 50 which is extremely high uh, we also have uh, for wet uh, or moist application, we can use the Duraplate, which is a polyester type filter. Another technology which, uh, which is critical in our industry, you can see our dust collector filters are actually open in pleats. You can, you can see that there's more breathable media uh, in our cartridges. So this reduces uh, the compressed air consumption, increases efficiency and it results a longer lifetime compared to the current technology which we have in the market. Also it comes complete with all the explosion protection equipment which we have in the industry. Uh, okay. so, so we have also chemical suppression, we have uh, Vantex valve, we have uh, backdraft damp damper, this is a fast acting valve, this is an explosion event. So we, we are ready to uh, protect your facility from in a case of explosion that nothing catastrophic will happen in your factory. The next one will be a gold link and this is a relatively new our company is not introduced in Asia yet, but is all more on your maintenance of your dust collector. Basically, this will tell you more on uh, like a building management system, what's going on with your building. In this case, what's going on with your dust collector. Okay. First, what is cooling? It's a control panel. Okay. It is used to collect data from your from your uh, dust collector to send back to us to monitor and explain to you what's going on with your dust collector. It can be used with your current dust collector and a new installation it is just a retrofit so it's not, not a big problem if you, you have an existing dust collector. So it will monitor up to 20 points, uh, it's a health checkpoint and it can provide you online data uh, you can access it through a website it updates the server every 2 minutes and logs the data every 5 minutes so it will also inform the end users camp field and designated sales distributors of the condition of your dust collector so uh, it's a air filter management system like I said it's like a building management system which guys should be more familiar with, uh, which will give information to EPA and OSHA and other inspection services. So this can be supplementary. In some countries, it's uh, a valid uh, report, annual report that we can use. So our goal link will ship pre-programming. All you need is to connect it to the internet and the goal link will create a tunnel to our own server and we we can, can allow access uh, to customers, distributors, and our capital ourselves. So, what we, we monitor is the primary filter DP, differential pressure of the primary filter, real time, like, like in the ashtray 199. Secondary filter, if you have this secondary filter, is a HEPA filter. Airflow, the total airflow which you are pulling. So, sometimes when you say, 
my dust collector is not uh, having enough suction, then this will actually indicate uh, the, the real situation of it. And emission. Emission of dust coming out from your uh, dust collector using a, a, a sampler, a particular sampler. So this is almost like an ashtray in your backyard. Ashtray 1 and 9 in your backyard. So what 16 digital points which we can tell you about is whether your blower is running or not. So you can access to your internet and check whether your dust collector is actually running. Airlock status, hopper alarm, alarm uh, level alarm, uh, blower order if your fan is down, VFD is down. Uh, if an explosion has happened, if your inlet isolation closed, uh, broken back detector if you have a broken back, uh, low airflow if you have low, low airflow and your VFD no longer can, can go up, then you will have low airflow problem, low dark static pressure, uh, zero speed fan alarm, smoke detector, high temperature, uh, cartridge. Uh, DP, high uh, secondary, high DP. So this is two alarms. Compared to the other one, the other one is real time reading, but these two alarm. This comes with our control panel. Okay, and then you can also test your compressed air pressure. So if you see those with the star, you actually need additional equipment, additional sensors like. Uh, for blower status, you need to add a relay to your blower to tell our, our dust collector whether your blower is running. Uh, like a VFD fault, you can pull it out from your VFD uh, cabinet to send it to our goalie. Uh, a hopper le level alarm, you need to uh, have a hopper level sensor. High temperature alarm, uh, temperature alarm, you will need to have also a sensor, temperature sensor. So this is the requirement. We will advise you what you require in case uh, to, to have all of these options. But not, not necessarily all of these options are required. Who gets access is again end users, distributors and our sales team. So if we know that your dust collector has some problem, we will give you a call. So does uh, bowling brings. So basically you have real-time data. Real-time data is always good. So you can know what actually go, went wrong with your, your dust bag and when. And if you have an incident time, let's say the explosion, then you will be able to track the time. And it will help us to understand our installation better. And also sometimes for EPA, EPA and OSHA requirement, uh, it helps in certain countries. Uh, as far as I know, in Singapore, is 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 valid or to have a particular sensor. So, thank you. And do you have any questions? Ha, cause a problem. Thank you, Mr. Justice. Okay, thank you. Okay. Atun, atun. You can laugh, ha. Nah, okay. Samrap in the head, this, nah. เราจะขอเชิญคุณจักรเรนคงวราคมผู้จัดการฝ่ายขายกลุ่มสินค้า Air Pollution Control หรือสินค้าประเภท Dust Collector ประจำแคมป์ฟิลประเทศไทยขึ้นมาสรุปและให้รายละเอียดเพิ่มเติมเกี่ยวกับหัวข้อนี้ค่ะขอเสียงปรบมือต้อนรับคุณจักรเรนค่ะก็สเตจ 1 ถึงสเตจ 3 นะครับจะเป็นช่วงเริ่มต้นการใช้งานก็คือ
หรือฟิลเตอร์ใหม่ๆอยู่นะครับพอสเตจสี่ก็จะเป็นช่วงที่ประสิทธิภาพเต็มที่ของตัวคาร์ดิฟิลเตอร์และสเตจที่5้าที่หก็จะเป็นช่วงอินเวอร์เรนซี่เคสนะครับกรณีที่ดัสเวกเตอร์ทำงานผิดพลาดครับสเตจหนึ่งนะฮะก็จะมีการปล่อยฝุ่นโดยไม่มีการเพาส์คลีนนิ่งจนเพชฌฎอกนะฮะถึงค่าที่กำหนดแล้วก็วัดปริมาณดัดฟีดและประสิทธิภาพการกรองสเตจสองนะฮะปล่อยฝุ่นให้มีการเพาส์คลีนนิ่งตามเพชฌฌฎอกที่กำหนดระยะเวลา4ชั่วโมงวัดปริมาณดัดฟีดจำนวนเพาส์และประสิทธิภาพการกรองครับสเตจที่3ก็ปล่อยฝุ่นนะฮะให้มีการเพาส์คลีนนิ่งแบบต่อเนื่องเป็นระยะเวลา24ชั่วโมงหรือเพชฌฌฎอกสูงกว่าเอ่อ lower limit นะครับแล้วก็วัดปริมาณดัดฟีดจำนวนการเพาและประสิทธิภาพการกรองนะครับสเตจสี่มีการปล่อยฝุ่นนะครับให้มีการเพาคลีนนิ่งตามเพชเชอร์ที่กําหนดเป็นระยะเวลา20ชั่วโมงหรือเพชเชอร์สูงกว่าโลเวลลิมิตนะครับแล้วก็วัดปริมาณดัดฟีดจำนวนการเพาและประสิทธิภาพการกรองนะครับสเตจที่5นี่หยุดปล่อยฝุ่นครับหยุดโทษฮะปล่อยฝุ่นแล้วก็แต่หยุดระบบเพาคลีนนิ่งนะครับจนกระทั่งเพชเชอร์นะครับขึ้นไปถึงอะลามพอยต์ตามสไลด์ที่วิทยาการโชว์ก็คือ10นิ้วน้ำนะครับวัดปริมาณดัดฟีดแล้วก็ประสิทธิภาพการกรองสเตจที่6นี่หยุดปล่อยฝุ่นนะฮะแล้วลดแอร์โฟนเนี่ยให้เหลือ 25% ให้มีการเพาคลีนนิ่งแบบต่อเนื่องนะครับ10ไซเคิลจากนั้นจะเพิ่มแอร์โฟเป็น 100% นะครับและปล่อยฝุ่นให้มีการเพาคลีนนิ่งตามเพชเชอร์อีกครั้งจำนวน1มิลลิมัมก็คือ1ไซเคิลวัดปริมาณดัดฟีดดัดฟีดและประสิทธิภาพการกรองนะครับโดยแสดงเป็นผลการเทสครับตามที่วิทยากรได้โชว์นะฮะการเทสก็จากที่เห็นก็คือของแอมฟิลแล้วก็มีการทดสอบตามสแตนดาร์ดนี้นะครับจากนั้นก็ทางวิทยากรก็ได้แนะนำผลิตภัณฑ์ตัวใหม่ๆออกมานะครับก็จะเป็นตัวใหม่ที่ก็คือตัว QVPPX นะครับเป็น d u s t Vector ที่ Comply นะฮะ a t e c Standard ใช้สำหรับคุณระเบิดนะครับสามารถติดตั้งได้ใน Indoor นะฮะโดยที่ไม่ต้องใช้ Equip นะครับซึ่งถ้าเป็นสมัยก่อนเนี่ยถ้าเป็นติดตั้งกับพวก Dust d i s p o s i t i เนี่ยเอ่อ Exposit Dust เนี่ยนะฮะเราจะเป็นต้องใช้เอ็กเวนซึ่งเวลาติดในอินดอร์เนี่ยนะก็จะมีผลแต่ตัวนี้ทำมาโดยที่ไม่ต้องใช้เอ็กเวนได้เลยอีกตัวหนึ่งก็คือเป็นควอนตัมซีรีส์ครับเป็นดัสคอลเลกเตอร์ราคาประหยัดนะครับประสิทธิภาพสูงมาพร้อมชุดคอนโทรลและพัดลมเสียบปลั๊กพร้อมใช้งานได้ทันทีครับต่อมาก็เป็นโกซีรีส์ซึ่งเป็นรุ่นปกติที่เราขายกันอยู่ทั่วไปนะฮะรุ่นนี้มาพร้อมกับคาติกฟิลเตอร์เทคโนโลยีเฮมิพีทและโกโคนซึ่งมีมีเดียเอเรียมากที่สุดในตลาดครับสุดท้ายก็คือเป็นโกลิงนะครับโกลิงเป็นอุปกรณ์ที่สามารถมอนิเตอร์สถานะต่างๆของดัสคอยเตอร์ได้อย่างเร็วทางนะครับผ่านทางอินเทอร์เน็ตเพื่อลดเวลาการจุดเพื่อซ่อมบำรุงและต้องการระบบที่มีสเกลภาพสูงครับจบนะฮะแค่นี้ค่ะขอเพิ่มเติมนิดนึงนะคะอาจจะมีลูกค้าบางส่วนที่ยังไม่รู้จักเครื่องดัสคอลเลกเตอร์เอาเป็นว่าถ้าตอนนี้โรงงานของท่านเจอปัญหาเรื่องฝุ่นขนาดใหญ่ที่ต้องการดูดออกจากลายผลิตหรือดูดออกจากสถานที่ที่ท่านทำงานให้นึกถึงแคมฟิลแล้วก็แจ้งน้องๆฝ่ายขายที่ดูแลท่านอยู่ว่าเจอปัญหาแบบนี้นะคะแล้วก็คุณจักรินเนี่ยจะเข้าไปดูหน้าง,งานแล้วก็จะเลือกสินค้าให้เหมาะกับปัญหาที่ท่านเจออยู่นะคะก็คือดัสคอลเลกเตอร์ของแคมฟิลเนี่ยนอกจากจะมีคุณภาพในเรื่องของการดูดฝุ่นแล้วเรายังสามารถช่วยท่านประหยัดพลังงานใช่ไหมคะประหยัดพลังงานแล้วอะไรคะแล้วก็ยืดอายุการใช้งานอ่าโอเคเตอร์อย่างยกตัวอย่างบางท่านใช้ดัสอยู่แล้วแต่เป็นถุงอ่าใช้ตัวคาทิดียังไงคะเออดัสเวกเตอร์ที่เป็นที่เป็นถุงนะฮะมีเดียอันนี้ต่อลูกเนี่ยน้อยกว่าคาทิคลูกหนึ่งเนี่ยฮะเทียบเท่ากับแบล็กฟิลเตอร์เนี่ยประมาณ30ลูกเพราะงั้นเวลาที่เราใช้ซิงตัวดัสเวกเตอร์นะฮะจะตัวเล็กมากถ้าเทียบกับตัวแบล็กฟิลเตอร์นะ
ครับแล้วก็ไลฟ์ไลฟ์ของคาติฟูเตอร์ก็นานกว่าเนื่องจากมีเดียเองเราเยอะกว่าครับก็คือสรุปง่ายๆว่าแคมฟิลมีทางเลือกสําหรับลูกค้าใหม่ที่เจอปัญหากับลูกค้าเก่าที่ใช้แบบถุงที่เป็นสําหรับตัวดักฝุ่นนะคะเราก็จะเสนอตัวคาติฟหรือฟิลเตอร์ไปทดแทนให้ท่านได้อย่างเงี้ยค่ะนี่คือสินค้าประเภทกลุ่มดัสคอลเลกเตอร์ค่ะโอเคค่ะขอบคุณคุณจักรินค่ะสวัสดีหนึ่งถ้าเรามีการทดสอบตาม a s เ e ย์หนึ่งเก้าเก้าซึ่งมั่นใจได้ว่าคือเรานำเสนอในสิ่งที่ดีที่สุดให้กับทุกท่านโอเคก็คือถ้าเป็นฟิลเตอร์ก็จะเป็น ISO หนึ่งหกแปดเก้าศูนย์แต่ถ้าเป็นดัสคอลเลกเตอร์ก็จะเป็นแอสเลตหนึ่งเก้าเก้านะคะคือสองมาตรฐานนี้ท่านก็สามารถทำงานแอปพูดได้ตามระบบเลยค่ะ